is health and staying healthy. What have you done during the off season that can ensure that you will stay healthy as healthy as you can throughout the course of the regular season? Um, same thing. Uh, what I've been doing. Um, just got to make sure that you know we. I don't know. Um, you know, you just. It's a matter of it's, you're going to trip on somebody. Um, you know, a lot of my injuries last year, I stepped on somebody's foot or ran into somebody. So um, you get, got to control what we can control and, uh, you know, get the treatments that we can at the time. So uh, listen to your body and keep moving and see what happens. Next, Kelly. Hi, good morning, Kawhi. Kelly Johnson with Fox 11. I uh, would love to hear your thoughts on the new uh, NBA player participation policy. Uh, what are they? <laughs> just, you know, I know that you've gotten a lot of flack for, you know, load management and just, you know, only resting certain players, you know, in certain situations. So uh, just would love to hear your thoughts on that. Um, I just don't know the policy. Like, uh, what is the policy then? Just okay. I'm going to ask you a different question if that's okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Cool. No, it's totally okay. Um, just would love to know how you're feeling if you did anything differently in the off season that maybe you hadn't tried in previous off seasons. No. I mean, uh, I mean, you try different stuff every year. I mean, every every year is a new journey. So every day, so, um, you do new things, but you gotta, you know. Just keep keep going. Uh, there's nothing new that happens. Uh, you're either going to get hurt or you're just going to be lucky enough to, you know, play games throughout the playoffs or the whole regular season. So, um, with that being said, if, if you're not injured, people play basketball. So nobody is in just trying to get to a certain amount of games or, uh, well, at least me. I'm not trying to get to a certain amount of games. I'm trying to play the games that I can play. But if I'm hurt, I can't play basketball. So the last two years been un unfortunately for me. Uh, I got hurt, tore my ACL. Then at the end of the year, tore my meniscus. And I mean, that's just it's basketball. <laughs> I'm a two-way player. Um, play hard, so injuries are going to come up. I'm not out there just walking around. I play both ends of the floor. They're just walking around. I play both ends of the floor. I'm not out there just walking around. I play both ends of the floor. I'm not out there just walking around. I play both ends of the floor. I'm not out there just walking around. I play both ends of the floor. I'm not out there just walking around. I play both ends of the floor. I see the best players on both ends every night. Either I'm guarding the best player or the best players guarding me. So. Whatever happens with that, the injury comes, that's what happens in the NBA. Thank you. Beth? Um, Kawhi, in regards to the league policy, I think uh, the gist of it is that they want their top 50 stars out on the floor every night if possible. And given that, I'm just wondering if you feel an obligation to play every game. No. I mean, I'm not a guy that's sitting down because I'm um, doing a load management play. Well, my, when I was with the Raptors, it was different. Like, I was coming from an injury. And you have to know the details of a doctor. Um, but if the league is seeing or trying to mock what I did with the Raptors, then they sh should stop because I was injured during that whole year. Um, but other than that, if I'm able to play, I'll play basketball. Um, you know, I'll work out every day in the summertime to play the game, not to sit and watch people play. Um, you know, so... No league policy is helping me to play more games. Um, if USA Basketball asks you, would you play in the Paris Olympics? Uh, yeah, I wanted to play this summer, but I had other obligations, and I, but I had to leave early, so I wasn't able to go. So we'll see what happens. We're going to get the microphone over to Tomer. Hey, Kawhi, hey, good to see you. Um, I, I'm just curious if, if this summer was at all different for you coming off the, uh, the rehab you had last year versus the rehab you had this year. Uh, <clears throat> it's, a, it's totally different. Um, ACL is whatever. I mean, you're tearing a ligament and this is a quick cleanup. 
Uh, well, at least for me it was. So it wasn't a whatever eight month process of trying to build a leg strength or build a tendon back. It just more of a, just letting a, a I guess swelling get out the knee and then you're pretty much good to go. Uh, given some of the you know contract situation this team, how long you guys have been together, do you feel like this is a championship robust year? Do you allow yourself to put that kind of pressure? How are you approaching this season mentally? Uh, I mean, my goal is to try to win every year. So um, I'm not, you know, looking into you know what's being said. Um, whatever happened is going to happen. So my focus is on the season to win a championship like it is every year. Brian, kind of a follow up to what told me I'm over here to your right. Um, last year coming in, I think we were all curious how long it would take you to kind of regain your form. Were you at all curious at that time and now put yourself in this position knowing how you played the last half of the season, so to speak? Do you have more of a sense of what you're going to be able to do on the floor than you did maybe a year ago? Um, I mean, I'm always confident in what I could do. Um, it's all based on how I'm moving and, you know, how I'm feeling the next day. So. You know, last year started the season probably, you know, weird. Not not starting, uh, then to starting and playing five minute segments. So even if I started anybody healthy, if you start that, you know, it's going to be up and down. Uh, it's going to be hard to find a rhythm. So you know, once I was able to get to those thirty plus minute marks, or uh, when I'm playing consistent minutes throughout the whole four quarters you start seeing the type of basketball I could play. But if I'm coming in playing 15 minutes, um, you're not going to see it because I'm not a guy that's going to come in trying to shoot 15 shots in 15 minutes and I'm trying to win a game. So some of those games I shot three times. Some of those games I shot four times. So two, five points, you start seeing that consistently. Like, oh, he, he, I don't know if he could play still. But once the 30 minutes came, the game laid out for itself. So. And right now, I feel the same way. If I'm able to, if they're going to be starting me with 30 minutes, I'm going to be able to see me play. Hey, Tony. Oh, excuse me. Hi, Kawhi. Um, because I'm right here. Uh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, because of the lineup flexibility with you guys, also like last season, a lot of forwards, a lot of guys who can play the two, three, and four. Do you? How do you view your position? Do you think of yourself still as a three? Do you want to play a little bit more of the four? Does it even matter to you at all? I don't know what position I've been playing <laughs> since probably the last six, seven years. Um, it's really a position in this league, um, depending on your coach and, you know, what, how he wants uh, his offense ran. And, you know, uh, some coaches like their four to bring up the ball, uh, you know, with the point guard. Uh, sometimes a shooting guard is initiating offense. So it's really pretty, pretty much... Uh, you know, the best players today is just, you know, put them in the game and put guys around them and figure it out who can, you know, uh, help the best players' weaknesses out. So I feel like that's where the NBA is at right today. Going to you right over here. Um, it was such a rushed introduction to play with Mason and Russ and Bones after the trade deadline last year for you guys. What do you feel like having a full training camp and a longer time to play with them? help you guys accomplish this year, especially Russ, having him in the starting lineup with yourself? Um, you know, bringing those guys in late, I think, obviously, uh, learning a new offense, defense, so it's team chemistry at that point. Uh, how quickly can you mesh with each other? And, um, you know, pretty much the same thing now, but they're starting with us. They're coming through the whole process of learning our, uh, you know, offense from day one. Um, uh, I think that's going to help out a lot. Uh, just having uh, Russ here, um, you know, backup point guard and Bones, um, having two bigs to start the season is going to be big. Is going to be great for us. Um, last year, we were up and down at that point guard position. Um, we only started the season with one big, so it was very tough. And then obviously, with me playing um, inconsistent minutes early, it was very tough for the team. And you know, hopefully, just having all the pieces that we need. Now that we have, uh, we can have a better start. And one final question for Kawhi, the gentleman here in the front. Hey Kawhi, LT Lucy, TG Sports TV One. 
from a defensive point of view, do you feel like with the players you have right now that you guys can be one of the top teams on defense this year? Uh, yeah, I mean, we should be holding ourselves accountable to that. Uh, you know, being one of the top five defenses in the league once it's done. Uh, defense wins the championship, so we got to be on the same page if we want to be a top tier team. Thank you, Koi. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. See, this is what I was talking about when I was talking and speaking about all of these people who falling for the banana in the tailpipe. How are you letting these people manipulate you? How y'all falling for that? Y'all know damn well Kawhi Leonard is the heart working NBA basketball player there is. If there's ever an example of what a hooper is, it's him and Kevin Durant. These guys are hoopers. They play hard. So those guys like Russ, Kyrie, they're going to have these type of injuries. They're not somebody that's taking the load off just to be chilling. Who was sitting on the sideline with a glass of Merlot on the sideline? Coming into the game with a glass of Merlot in his hand. That's your guy. That's the guy who asked y'all kids try to talk about he the best player in NBA history. If that's the case, if he the best player in NBA history, why he looking like it? what he look like? Why is he doing everything that y'all complaining about now? That guy load managed. Kawhi has finally addressed and made common sense out of all of it. When he was in Toronto, nobody complained until he won the championship. Once he became a Clipper, that's when y'all really loaded up with this low management. He, how he can do that? How he can do it? Knowing this man had came off an injury that kept him out two seasons. Two. In San Antonio. He was medically approved for the rest days by the NBA, by the union, the Board of Governors. Everybody who made these rules knew Kawhi Leonard wasn't load managing. Then, on top of all that, he goes ahead. And does what, ladies and gentlemen? What does he do? What is it that this man has done? Hmm? He turned the Clippers into a ticket seller. And you know what? He has the longest winning streak against LeBron James than anyone in basketball history. They don't want to talk about that either. Now, what else do they want to talk about? Hmm? What else is their needful thing? To try to take away from this man's glory and what he actually brought to the table, what he actually brought to the game of basketball. He's a two way player. And because he plays defense better than LeBron, there's a problem. Now, would anyone ever say LeBron James is a better defender than Kawhi Leonard? At any point of his career, I will eliminate them from any type of basketball talk. Straight like that. Next, as we move forward in this endeavor, 
We go through the cycle. And when you go through the cycle, this is what you get. This is exactly what you get. People who come up and create things that don't exist. That's what you're getting now. Kawhi Leonard exposed what LeBron James is. He basically pointed it out. The man who don't talk much, when he says something, the world pays attention. I heard him clearly. I heard him clearly detail everything y'all trying to do to him, tried to make him the face of load management when the man just came off an ACL injury. Had to have surgery for ACL and just tore his meniscus. So, again, do you even know what that's like to keep battling injuries and have to keep going and pushing yourself further? The rehab, the training, the the... The minor success, like ACL injuries were career enders. Just about, what, 15 years ago. You know, knee injuries took away, take away a lot of your jumping ability. You know, before they started trying new measures and new procedures. Before it was touch and go, 50-50. And Penny Hardaway was never the same from his first um, knee surgery when he had to go under the knife. And we lost potentially one of the greatest players of all time. I'm somebody who definitely knew what was going on um, with this media attention and how people get brainwashed and fall for it. I was not the one that was going to fall into the trap. I was someone who knew what the situation was going to tell. I'm somebody who knew what everyone else was going to be afraid to say. I knew that. Now, what I didn't want what I didn't want to happen was for the rest of everyone else who was involved to start making accusations about Kawhi Leonard because he doesn't talk and don't respond to people. He doesn't have social media. It's easy for people to use him as the guinea pig and just say these things because he's just going to go play ball. But he hears it because the media wants to bring it up to him and try to make him as the face of low managing when that isn't what he's doing. Anything to take the attention away from the low manager himself, LeBron James. Everything they've done is to protect that bum. And now everyone gets to see it.
Uh, I really haven't had too many. Like the season's been over, so I haven't really been like locked into basketball like that. Nobody really pays attention to basketball to after the Super Bowl's over. Once the Super Bowl's over, then it's like okay. We can pay attention to basketball again. Other than that, nobody's just like caring about what's happening in basketball. Then, uh, if a lot of it happens, then oh great, you know, oh that's wonderful. But if not, nobody really cares. To be honest, I'm just saying. Now, with that being said, I want to say shouts out to Kwame Brown Bus Life, Kwame Brown Bus Life 2.0. I want to say shout us out to Welcome to HDTV with the two eyes. I want to say shouts out to Jag Sports with Jose Rodriguez, Armando Black TV, Ticket TV, keep doing his thing. And I'm out. God bless. Be easy. <laughs>